Uh, unfortunately, Daniel won't be joining us for this uh, presentation. Okay, you can continue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the necessity for more efficient wastewater treatment systems to support California is directly linked with the drought crisis and escalation in water withdrawal countrywide. As shown by the US Drought Monitor, almost all of California is in either D3, extreme drought, or D4, exceptional drought. As an effect of extreme droughts, hydropower energy has significantly became less viable. This can be seen in the Hoover Dam as water levels rapidly drop, risking uh, roughly 75,000 people's worth of electrical energy. So um, all wastewater treatment plants and vault microalgae are built on the concept of removing excessive ni nitrogen phosphorus from water while growing algae as a byproduct. And uh, you can see here that the microalgae's consumption of nitrogen and phosphorus effectively cleans the wastewater of discharge from human feces, food, and soaps. And uh, this also allows for the growth of the microalgae, which can be used as a biofuel with the same energy potential as coal. Additionally, microalgae treatment is a lot more cost effective than traditionally activated sludge treatment methods. They cost about $300,000 annually, whereas the latter is twice as costly with an annual rate of $600,000. The microalgae water wastewater treatment plant involves a cycle with a heterotrophic bacteria. Wastewater containing nitrogen and phosphorus is inputted into the circle, which fuels microalgae's growth and produce production of oxygen. The bacteria within the system consumes oxygen and additional organic matter to produce carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide then gets absorbed by the microalgae to finish the cycle. Once wa wastewater depletes the nitrogen and phosphorus, a separation process collects all of the microalgae. Since the microalgae is solely powered by sunlight, there is no excessive use of electricity. Instead, the treatment plant produces biofuel with reduced greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, different variations of the microalgae systems include the raceway pond, tubular photobioreactor, vertical photobioreactor, and flat plate bioreactor. And these designs all go with their own uh, flaws and limitations. So starting with the raceway pond design, it is primarily restricted because of its open lid design. So most of these limitations are geographic. It cannot be built in locations with more than 1,000 millimeters of annual rainfall or constructed in a way that would cause more than 2% land slippage. The open design of the raceway pond also makes it prone to bacterial and viral contaminations. In addition, factors such as pH, oxygen, and carbon dioxide must be carefully maintained in balance. Then the other uh, major problem with this design is that it uh, doesn't produce very much microalgae in general. The tubular photobioreactor's dependency on sunlight makes it susceptible to seasonal and weather changes. On top of that, an efficient cooling system must also be in uh, installed to keep the microalgae alive. The vertical photobioreactors are unable to be used in large-scale settings due to limitations of scaling the system up. This design is much more ideal for indoor set testing and sampling. Similar to the tubular system, flat plates photobioreactors uh, rely on extensive surface areas for coverage for efficiency. It is also vulnerable to varying weathers and temperatures Additionally, the design of the system may lead to overheating. However, differing from the tubular design, flat plate by photobioreactors are much more cost efficient. Yeah, that's it. Our presentation's a bit short. Thank you. So now it's time for five minutes. Judge's question. Um, yes. Um, so, so um, you, you talk about the limitation of this different, um, you know, treatment system. So, have you guys looked into, um, you know, any improvement that can be made, or what's kind of the best of those, um, you know? Uh, which, sorry? which will be most effective? And if any improvement can be made on the current systems? On the current microalgae systems? Yeah. Uh, we did not put that much research into that department.
Okay, how about how about comparison of the current system? Do you have idea which might be most um, like practical? Or, uh, yeah, we uh, compared it to the traditional activated sludge treatment method, and there are a lot of benefits. Like mainly, it's more cost effective, and also you get this uh, microalgae byproduct that can be used as clean energy. Uh, for now, though, I do believe the flat plate uh, photobioreactors are, you know, better since it's more cost effective and it doesn't have as much limitations as the other one. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Can I ask you guys, um, how do you think your teammates, you, how do you work in a team environment? Do, uh, how do you describe your team interaction? Uh, it was a bit bumpy because it was hard to get everyone on at the same time. Our uh, other guy didn't really participate much. But yeah, we just worked on it together, I guess. How do you think, uh, uh, what kind of role did your coach play in your whole learning process? Uh, definitely the coaches made things a lot easier to understand. I went back to the Zoom recordings multiple times to get the grasp of the concepts. Cool, thank you. Any questions from the other judges? Hmm? Okay, if not, I will going to move forward. So we'll we we'll come. Elaine, are you going to ask a question or? Yeah, just maybe just a quick one. So I think this uh this project is pretty pertinent for the previous presentation, right? For the wastewater treatment as well. So do you do you think there's a synergy that you you see? for your project to be applied in the wastewater treatment that was presented by the previous team? Uh, I think they are, they have their own benefits and they could work along each other, but maybe not combined. I'm not so sure. Thank you. Okay. So, so right now we welcome our last group uh, is the um, Messing in Groundwater group. So we are welcome the team member, Howard Ye, uh, Karen Miao, Angela Lin, and, and Tang Shen, and Eric Song, and uh, Zachary uh, Ge. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, may I ask you a question about uh, Dr. YR? So is your separate two groups or you can be together about Wednesday Lee and Tony Wang and Lily and uh, Shen Ye? <laughs> This is the same group. They just okay. are writing two sections separately. Okay. Got it. Okay. So welcome all of them. Okay. So. So I I think you you missed that the four members, right? You, yeah. you want to go one more time? Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna welcome the members of the Townshen, Eric Song, Zachary Ge, and Howard Ye, and Karen Miao, and Angela Lin, and Wednesday Lee, and Tony Wang, and Li Li, and Shang Ye. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. So before before I start, I just want to say this project is uh, is from real life problem. Okay, uh, twenty eighteen when Chur County detected methane in their drinking water aquifer in groundwater. So since then they try to figure out where the methane coming from. Is it coming from the bacteria degradation or coming from the nearby uh, drilling oil and gas field? So this is the real problem. So uh, our uh, project gave to the team and uh, they, uh, they learn a little bit about the, everything. So uh, we prepared a, a video clips, so uh, enjoy. Thank you. And when you're ready, please share your screen. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone, my name is Wendy Lee. I am Karina. Hello, my name is Angela. Hi, my name is Jay Shen. Hello, my name is Eric Song. Hi, my name is Zachary. Hello, I'm Howard. Hi, my name is Tony. Hi, my name is Sean. Hi, my name is Lee. And we 
present you our Bethane in Groundwater final project. Enjoy! I made a model of a methane molecule. Methane is made up of four hydrogen atoms and one carbon atom. I will be talking about my drawing of the groundwater profile. As you can see, I've created a basic drawing with the components of groundwater. And you can see that I've included the unconfined water, the aquifer, the aquitard, also called confined layer, and the bedrock. In it, you can also see that the water table and the water source is mentioned, which is the river. And the water table is basically where the unconfined water started. Methane is an organic chemical compound with the chemical formula CH4. Um, its molecule is nonpolar and therefore it is a gas um, at room temperature. It belongs to the family of compounds called the alkanes, which typically consist of carbon and hydrogen atoms arranged in a tree structure. Um, these, this family of chemicals is known for its flammability. Methane is a colorless, odorless, flammable gas, which is the main constituent of natural gas. It is the simplest member of the alkaline series of hydrocarbons. Natural gas, which primarily consists of methane, is the cleanest burning fossil fuel. However, methane that is released into the atmosphere before it is burned is harmful to the environment. Because it is able to trap heat in the atmosphere, methane contributes to global warming. Methane, which is relatively abundant on Earth, is widely used for its flammability. It is the primary constituent of natural gas, a common fuel in homes, automobiles, and more. Methane is a major greenhouse gas responsible for 20% of radiative forcing or heat transfer capacity. In the atmosphere, methane is emitted from various sources, including decomposition, animals, industrial waste, and more. Methane is not toxic, however, it can be asphyxiated if volume is substantial enough to lower oxygen concentrations below 16%. These are the methane properties. Molecular mass is 16.043 grams. Melting point is negative 182. 0.45 Celsius. Boiling point is negative 161.5 Celsius. Flash point is one, negative 188. And the solubility water is 22.7 milligrams. And then the color of methane is uh, colorless and the odor is odorless. Methane can gain to drinking water in two ways. First, methane is a natural product of subsurface bacteria. Secondly, methane can leak from deep underground storage fields. And after methane dissolves into groundwater, it can then enter the drinking water supply to houses. Since methane itself is not considered toxic, there is no existing drinking water standard for methane. However, according to the US Department of Interior, if the concentration of dissolved methane gets greater than 28 mg per liter, then flammable methane could be released. Methane is not explosive when it is in the groundwater, but after the dissolved methane reaches the air and escapes from the water, it can then cause a danger of fire or explosion in a confined area. If methane is released indoors, it can also lower the level of oxygen and eventually making breathing difficult. Though there have been occasions in Pennsylvania when house camps or wells exploding due to elevated a concentration of methane in water. Therefore, it is very important to test methane level in well water once there is extensive bubbling in the water. Later. Let's do it. Thank <laughs> you. 